Okay, I'm ready. Okay. It's a I'll be honest, this is my first presentation under a tree <laughs> in front of such a great farmer. So, but you have to introduce yourself. I will, uh, absolutely. Okay, all right. I'm uh, Ganesh Vishwanath, you can call me Ganesh. Um, you just pronounce as you see the word. Um, I am, um, the, the company is based in California. I'm actually, um, this is a new uh, industry for myself in the last two years, uh, moved into agriculture industry. Uh, before that, I was in uh, high tech. I worked in uh, Cisco Systems, all these networking gadgets and all the Wi-Fi you use uh, in the bus and in your farm and everything. That's something I built it. Um, and before coming to this, I don't know if I'm going to get hit here, but uh, I was very instrumental in building Covert California. So I will be a con manager for the farm market. So I think, uh, but this is a new, this is totally a new job. Uh, and thanks uh, uh, for having me here and, and uh, listening to uh, our uh, new product that we are trying to launch. Before um, I start off, two things. Um, if I'm too fast, my apologies with this accident. I'll try to be slow. If you have any questions, I'm available after or even during the sessions, please feel free to ask. The second um, is uh, I have a question for you all. Um, do you use any CV based product in your uh, application today? Uh, very few. Uh, I know there is a bunch of them out there. There is a uh, uh, Acadian uh, version of kelp, the big kelp, uh, the different species of uh, kelp. All the kelp that you see is, is grown in the uh, uh, cold water. It's a cold water species. Primarily they call that brown algae. Um, the one that we are launching, and we launched it uh, this year um, as a commercial product um, in the uh, United States and uh, Canada and North America, is primarily from a tropical species. Um, so uh, it's a 0035 is how we launch. Um, 35, uh, it's a very highly concentrated product. I'll get to that uh, how when, when the application rate comes, uh, when the application mechanism comes in. Um, we are a Fremont-based, California-based company. Um, we are located in uh, the Bay Area near San Jose. Um, that's where we host all of our product, we warehouse it. Um, the reason we have an office here, even though we import it and the product is grown in India, uh, it's actually grown on the coastal region of India. Um, like I said, it's a tropical species. It grows at a, at a seawater temperature of 30 to 35 degrees centigrade. If anything below or above that, the plant won't grow. Uh, and the uh, plant has uh, unique uh, properties by itself. Um, it adjusts to various climatic conditions uh, by itself and it transfers the same properties to your plant. Um, the plant also grows at a rate of 3.5% 5 every day. Uh, so we have, uh, we actually harvest in the coastal bed. Unlike uh, you see a cold water species like kelp where you do a wild harvest, you actually get it down in the deep sea try to cut it down. We don't do that. We actually cultivate and harvest on the coastal bed. So we know we can pull the, we have the seaweed out at the maximum potential. So when it's grown fully, we actually get the benefit of it. Um, what is this species called? This is, like I said, the cold water, Ascophilus modicin, which is the carrot, is a brown algae. This is uh, from a species called Caphophycus alvarezi. It's pretty hard to pronounce and understand, so it's a red algae. Um, it's uh, again grown in pretty much in a tropical climate, uh, and we um, the, uh, the way uh, we do it is we have a patented technology in terms of taking the sap out of the seaweed. We don't try to add any chemicals, any synthetics to it. It's certified organic. Even our plant and uh, the weed is certified USDA compliant, and also any uh, process that we do is is completely all natural. Uh, we actually grind it, we take the sap out of the product and that's a single strength and we take it through um, a various filtration mechanism which is a nano filtration and an RO filtration and take it through a three big chambers of uh, spread light mechanism so nothing is touched in the entire process, everything is just automated. Um, it's actually, um, the, the factory it's also a full data factory, it's certified ISO 22001 so in terms of compliance, in terms of um, uh, what goes in the product, it's nothing. It's, it's all what the plant gives us. Uh, it's all natural. Uh, what is the advantage of this, of this plant? 
like you all may have heard, um, seaweed primarily works as a biostimulant. Um, I know there are certain words that you can use and can't use, but um, in the industry, it acts as a biostimulant for enabling your, your plant uh, growth hormones uh, that your plant is already capable of doing certain things. Um, this particular species has uh, twice the amount of any chemical product that's available uh, from the cold water. Um, so the options, um, gibberlins and cytokinins are pretty high. Uh, in this product, which actually helps to increase your um, uh, shoot length of the, of the, uh, of the crop, to increase of the leaves. Uh, you, know, you apply right before the flowering, it actually helps to enable more flowers into it and keeps the plant in balance uh, uh, overall. So there are major, um, the three major components of the plant, which is the micro, micro, micronutrients, amino acids, and the PGRs. Uh, PGRs plays a great role in, uh, in the crop, in the agriculture space. Um, Oxins definitely helps to increase the, the roots of your plant, strengthens it, and it transfers into helping it to elongate the stem and growing of the leaf and the foliage. It's at that point, it transfers the activities that into cytokinins and, and then the gibberlins, which uh, plays uh, a much different role. Some of the benefits at a very high level um, uh, are like um, it's out there in the in the thing. It's more of a marketing thing, but. Um, the one of the major things we have seen in the plant is whatever is available in the plant, it's 100% bioavailable. It is, um, it is completely absorbed by your plant. It also helps to take the nutrients from your soil and make it available for your plant. I think mean, that's the, the major uh, function of it, um, of, of the plant that it, uh, that it does. Like I said, the, uh, the auxins um, uh, help in uh, several microbial metabolic uh, functions, primarily uh, helping you to strengthen the, the roots of it, whereas the cytokinins uh, helps in uh, pretty much in the stress response. Um, before I go to the next one, I just want to uh, call it out. The product has been, even though it's been launched in North America this year, this has been out there for 10 years in various countries we have done. Um, every year we conduct 45 to 55 trials. Um, in India, we've done trials in Australia, in South Africa, and also, uh, um, I don't know if I have to use this name here, but I know Syngenta is trying this product in four different countries um, in the seeding um, and germination process. So the product has a um, lot of credibility in terms of journals that's published by universities um, in various crops, um, also the nut crops and uh, cash crops and seafood crops and vegetable crops. I did bring a file, it didn't bring a lot of material, but if you email me, I'm more than happy to share those journals. I have a file over there, you can just browse through it. Um, it has a few uh, journals that we, uh, we have published in there. Um, so that, that's that's the credibility that you bring. Again, um, getting to the, uh, uh, the gibberlins, I think gibberlins really helps to in, um, increase in uh, the germination process, right from the germination process, increasing the stem elongation, um, transfer the photosynthesis of uh, your, your crop. For example, what we have seen is when you apply in citrus, uh, we have seen the increase of sweetness in citrus. Uh, potato lays have tested this product on potatoes. They have seen 25% yeah. increase in starch content on potatoes. So those photosynthesis yeah. activities yeah. in the crop is, is uh, seen benefits in the crop. Um, and <laughs> these are the reports that we can absolutely share uh, uh, with yeah. you all. Uh, like I mean, very few of you as you're using the product, um, some of you uh, may have seen kelp by itself. It's uh, pretty dark in color, uh, the powder version of the kelp. Whereas um, I do have samples here. Please don't forget, take as much samples as you can. Um, at least take one, uh, so at least you can get a touch and feel for it. And what you can do is, if this is a 20 gram sample, so you can actually mix it uh, with uh, maybe three gallon of water and maybe just use it in your plant crops in your house. You should start seeing results in a couple of weeks, even if you use it in as simple as a tomato crop or uh, any of uh, your plant. The, the, pow the powder of this particular product is completely natural. It's, uh, it's completely grain color, or you call it green. It's not like a black. The reason it's not black is because we don't do any heated process, whereas some of the kelp, they actually do an alkaline heater and they actually dip it in a hydrogen peroxide, which is a synthetic material. And uh, there's definitely discussions going on in terms of you know, how, do we, how do we not use that anymore. Because while this was launched, I think when kelp has been used several years back, there was not many technologies available, but there are several technologies now that's available where you don't have to use any chemicals in your um, uh, extraction process. And it's completely natural. You can absolutely taste it. It's very salty. Um, 
this has been a part of diet in certain Asian countries, uh, especially in the um, uh, Philippines. What they do is they take the dry wheat, they wash it off, and they chop it and mix it with rice and eat it with cucumber. So it's uh, salted cucumber rice, so they call it. But uh, it's uh, but it's definitely edible as well. Uh, we are not um, uh, planned to launch it in the nutrition in a, in a human nutrition space yet. But uh, right now we are focusing on um, agriculture and crops and also in the livestock. Uh, uh, and the application rate in general in, in almonds, uh, what we recommend when you are planting the plant, um, we want to use it in a smaller um, uh, dosage. So typically, we um, this is a very highly concentrated product, like I said, this is like a 20 grams or like, um, a 200 grams or 7 ounce um, of your product can go up to an acre. So you, um, you use less than 7 ounce in the beginning so that it actually helps to strengthen your roots better. You don't want your cytokinins and chibalins to play an active role when you're planting. You want auxins to play a more bigger role at that point. Maybe a little bit of cytokinins. And then when the plant grows, when it comes to a certain point, it has more leaves, then spray at a seven ounce per acre. Um, that's when you want the cytokinins to play its role and chibalins to have a long lived stem and have more foliage into it. And as the tree grows, and then I'm sure many of you have a much um, mature tree, so you apply right before the flowering stage. Um, so you help the, the flowering process in the, in, the, in the tree to help a bud better. Also helps to break the stress. Um, if you, um, uh, I know that's um, it's not a right example, but if you know that there's a rain coming in tomorrow and after a while, then you apply a day before. It helps the plants to break from the stress condition. And, I mean, we all know too much rain is a problem, no rain is a problem. Um, you know, and, and you know, no water is also, and anything that's more or less there I don't want it to be a more marketing even though I got an opportunity to share my product but if you have any questions I'll try to answer if not I'm more than happy to get back to you if it's something beyond my capability. <laughs>